Hey mermaids! Um, this is my endoscopy vlog. Um, I was not in a good mood at all the morning of this procedure. The day before, um, a very devastating thing happened to me and I was still feeling that. So the morning of, I was just not wanting to talk at all but I knew I would regret it and be mad at myself if I didn't record something when I was there so I recorded myself in the office um, <laughs> ticking it was the first time I'd been that loud in public I have ticked in public before you know like at Walmart and Best Buy but they were <laughs> small ticks nothing loud at all and I was very loud and it was echoing and it was just I was dealing with things that didn't want to deal with, particularly on a day that I was doing something so nerve-wracking for me, um, but this is the footage that I do have. Hi, I do want to say when I was coming out of anesthesia to me it sounded like I was trying to tell them that I had an in like an IC flare which is interstitial cystitis and um, when I was there we were only in the um, waiting room area for a little while I feel like they brought me back really quick um, so that was nice <laughs> especially I was since I was really embarrassed by there um, I just didn't like the people staring at me and I had brought a pillow because I'm weird with pillows and um, I use that to kind of muffle my ticks a lot and that seemed to help but like muffling it but I didn't feel like I don't know I want to be able to mu I, don't, I don't know how I feel about my ticks so far like totally yet I, like I feel like they're rude but I can't help it so I, like not being able to help it doesn't mean doesn't make it totally rude, in my opinion. Like if I went to a movie theater, and I was no screaming really loud and stuff and having a lot of ticks, I think I would be rude. So I personally would not go to a movie theater, but in public in an office situation where I can't help it, I'm not gonna always have a pillow. And doing my hands over my mouth, which I've tried a few times, I move, you know. So no. And trying to keep your hand with your face is just really hard. No! <sighs> no! Um, you're going to notice in the video that I'm very frustrated by my tics. Um, I hate them. They're not fun. So I was frustrated. And I am kind of apprehensive of showing you me. Showing, showing you me. Showing myself frustrated. I don't like that I get so frustrated, but I was frustrated, and that is authentic, and I want to be authentic with y'all. So I'm going to show y'all. No! Hmm! Ha! No! Woo! Woo! Monkey! Woo! 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 No! No! Helping my headache. No. Woo. No. Woo. Do you clean it so it doesn't sound like I need to blow my nose when I do that? Do you get it? Woo. No. Woo. Monkey.
registration. Console room. Never mind. I'm just paranoid. It's really hot. <sighs> no. I'm waiting in the consult room. And I've got this annoying thing on. These are like sensory hell. I hate these. <laughs> no. It's not a good day. Hello, Simona. How are you? Good, how are you? No! I need to get a urine sample from okay. you. I have you to go anyway. Things here. Well, I have to go anyway. So. Yeah, you, know. you ain't gotta feel the problem. When I woke up, I pretty much immediately started ticking, my mom said. And um, she got a little video of me waking up. It's kind of embarrassing. I'm going to show you all anyway. You're going to... Yank your nose ring out, girl. Katie, hey, calm down. My nose itches. Well, you're gonna yank your ring out if you don't stop. Mm. Sweaty. <coughs> Katie. Who's interested? Calm down. Um, and she had to stop the video because they were going. They needed. They needed to hold me down. I wasn't. They needed to hold me down. I wasn't like aggro, like angry or anything. I was just very, really, very confused when I woke up, and my ticks were awful when I woke up. Um, it was just I don't know. I still felt like the they put oxygen on me, and it made my nose really itchy. And um, it's been several days since the thing i've kind of put off making this intro um i still have like little bitty bruises on my arm i don't think this one has very many that's gonna show where is it at there it is i don't know um they give you at the hospital that i went to they give you lidocaine when they do your iv that's cool um they always have to dig on me so that was a plus like on this side is the side that they finally got, they finally had to do it on, and they um, were digging to get it in. And when they finally got it in, it didn't feel very right, but we left it in anyway, and it left like this awful scar that, not scar, but bruise. It kind of looked like hickeys to me. And um, coming out of it, I do not like anesthesia. Um, they use this. I can't remember the name of the stuff that they used to put me under. It's the stuff that Michael Jackson died on. So, propofol? Something like that? Propofol. Something like that. I'll put the name up. Um, I have heard that it was like crap going under, just like falling asleep on it. Um, I don't really remember going to sleep on it. I remember them bringing me back there and putting this like blue gag in my mouth that had like a little hole. I remember telling them that. They're like, open your mouth, we're going to put it in. So I'm like, well, why? That's a gag. They gave me this, like, loopy stuff first. And, um, so that was weird. And I don't really remember getting loopy. I just remember getting kind of sleepy. And, um, I've met two anesthesia people so far. And every single anesthesia person that I've met is kind of weird. In, like, a good way, I guess. Like, they make all these little bitty jokes and stuff. And, um, like, he said, I flipped it and you didn't even know it. And he says, I gave you loopy medicine, so feel free to enjoy that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, I remember that. What else do I remember? Oh, waking up. 
like when I got home was weird. I had a weird dream about tattoos. I'm getting my first tattoo soon since I'm turning 21 and I'm so excited. And so I've been overthinking about tattoos. So I want to tell y'all my dream because I think it's hilarious. Um, but yeah, coming out of anesthesia, did not like it at all. I, like, it was, bleh, honestly, I just knew I was acting weird and couldn't stop. Um, I didn't know it, but I left my phone on in my purse when they locked it up. So I had, like, my phone was dead when I got it. So I couldn't record anything else. But, um... I have a bunch of like blank stuff I have to go through of like I can hear things and it's just entertaining to hear. It was locked up all the whole time but when I got my purse back, when my mom got my purse, I could hear myself waking up and so that was interesting to hear. I might leave a clip of it at the very end of the video, like after like the um, the end card. I don't know yet. I need to listen to it. Because <laughs> I know I sound weird because I was saying no constantly and there were ticks, but um I don't know it's still kind of embarrassing for me, but Yeah, my mom was afraid I was gonna rip my nose ring out, but that'd be really hard. It's way up there It's like Right here kind of it's up there septum piercings are pierced up there if they're pierced correctly not like in the way in the front But anyway, um I remember the nurse telling me that um, she kept, my mom wanted to take the ring out or something. I don't know. Glad they, she didn't. But um, they did tape my piercings. I'm very glad they didn't tape my VCH. That would have been an awkward piercing to tape. But they did tape my nipple piercings and they taped this piercing like you saw on the, um, I can't think. Thumbnail. Um, so they did tape that. Um, peeling off the tape afterwards was annoying. And my nipples were hurting afterwards. So, I don't know. Now that I am totally, like, awake and thinking, they taped the piercing stupid. If they're actually trying to tape it to keep you from burning yourself, if they need to shock you with a defibrillator, they're not taping it correctly at all. Because they just put the tape on my nipple they should have put tape underneath each ball and then put tape on top of it like I still would have gotten burned inside the nipple but that would have kept scars from forming on my areola and I don't understand why they didn't tape it that way so they didn't like if you're gonna tape something to keep like they, they need to think about that and then like they first when they first taped my septum piercing they were gonna tape it like this and I'm like let's fix it up like this and actually wrap the tape around it right here so if anything gets burned it gets burned up inside and it doesn't see you don't see a fucking big scar because that's the only thing I would be worried about is like scar tissue or having to take the piercing out that would like I would cry it's been several days since the thing i've kind of put off making this intro um i still have like little bitty bruises on my arm i don't think this one has very many that's gonna show where is it at there it is i don't know um they give you at the hospital i went to they give you lidocaine when they do your iv that's cool um they always have to dig on me so that was a plus like on this side is the side that they finally got, they finally had to do it on, and they um, were digging to get it in. And when they finally got it in, it didn't feel very right, but we left it in anyway, and it left like this awful scar. That not scar, but bruise. It kind of looked like hickeys to me. Coming out of it, I do not like anesthesia. Um, they used this. I can't remember the name of the stuff that they used to put me under. It's the stuff that Michael Jackson died on. Propofol? Something like that? Propofol. Something like that. Um, I have heard that it was like crap going under, just like falling asleep on it. Um, I don't really remember going to sleep on it. I remember them bringing me back there and putting this like blue gag in my mouth that had like a little hole. 
<laughs> I remember telling them that. They're like, open your mouth, we're gonna put it in. So I'm like, well, why? That's a gag. They gave me this, like, loopy stuff first. And, um, so that was weird. And I don't really remember getting loopy. I just remember getting kind of sleepy. And, um... I've met two anesthesia people so far, and every single anesthesia person that I've met is kind of weird. In, like, a good way, I guess. Like, they make all these little bitty jokes and stuff, and, um, like, he said, I flipped it and you didn't even know it. And he says, I gave you loopy medicine, so feel free to enjoy that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, I remember that. What else do I remember? Oh, waking up, like, when I got home was weird. I had a weird dream about tattoos. I'm getting my first tattoo soon since I'm turning 21, and I'm so excited. And so I've been overthinking about tattoos. So I want to tell you all my dream because I think it's hilarious. Um, but, yeah, coming out of anesthesia, did not like it at all. I, like, it was, bleh, honestly... I just knew I was acting weird and couldn't stop. Um, I didn't know it, but I left my phone on in my purse when they locked it up. So I had, like, my phone was dead when I got it. So I couldn't record anything else. But um, I have a bunch of, like, blank stuff I have to go through of, like, I can hear things. And it's just entertaining to hear it was locked up all the whole time, but when I got my purse back, when my mom got my purse, I could hear myself waking up. And so that was interesting to hear. I might leave a clip of it at the very end of the video, like after like the, um, the end card. I don't know yet. I need to listen to it. Because <laughs> I know I sound weird, because I was saying no constantly, and there were ticks. But, um, I don't know. It's still kind of embarrassing for me but so it's been several days or actually week probably a week since my endoscopy was done and I was just really out of it um I had a strange dream that I wanted to tell y'all and um I filmed part of the intro but then I needed to stop because I was just there's so much brain fog that I'm dealing with that I couldn't even get through the video and I didn't want to um have to cut out Mi several minutes of video because I'm just sitting there trying to think of what I want to say because that's kind of how it is normally but normally it's about like a minute at least but this was probably like 10 minutes of just brain fog and so I just had to stop and I would record it later I still have a lot of brain fog right now today but I need to get this edited and up and um didn't want to go I didn't want to not tell you all my dream because I think it was really weird um, basically, like, you know, while, I don't know how to say it, it's Wild E. Coyote, that cartoon from Looney Tunes with, um, Roadrunner. You know those, like, um, you know how, like, in the old version, like, when we were a kid, how, um, you had those, like, little rocks that they had to climb over? I think you might know what I'm talking about, but, um... Basically, I got a, I've been wanting a tattoo, and I have planned my tattoo that I, have and thought of it, and have custom kind of designed it from ideas and drawings that I want. Not drawings, but like, I've gone and found other tattoos that kind of look like what I want, and I have cropped it together and made my tattoo, and I'm going to bring it to an artist, and he'll draw it up and make it my own. And I want all my tattoos to be custom. So that's what I'm doing. And so I've been thinking about tattoos. So when I went to sleep the day I got home from the endoscopy, um, part of it was me because I'm just a weird person and I stress about things. And a lot of my stress comes out through dreams. And like I've had weird dreams. Like one day I was riding a llama in the sea, like underwater, and we had a snorkel and everything. It was an interesting dream. And anyway, this one was an interesting dream too. I had to like... I wish I could paint y'all a picture of this because it is just interesting the way I can see it in my head. Like, 
it was like this cave and inside this cave it was really really dark and if I wanted to get a tattoo that was cheaper I could go inside the cave and get tattooed with the alligators and it would be cheap like cheap as in like a normal tattoo today anyway the um, rule of this tattoo shop which it wasn't even a tattoo shop it was more of like a tattooed cavern or something like this these tattoo artists were hosting a tattoo shop inside of a alligator infested gross like pondy water I don't really know what to call it it's like water in a um cave type area and in order to get to this area you had to climb and scale these huge rocks rocks that are like the size of the little bitty um rocks that were drawn in like um Looney Tunes, you know what I'm, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. And, um, you know, if a person, just think of that, think of, like, me trying to climb over a rock, it just wouldn't work very well. So I'm literally, like, I don't think my disabilities were, like, brought into the dream at all because I could not climb a rock. But I'm climbing this rock trying to get to this cave. And I get there and I'm like, dude. I want an alligator tail tattooed on my leg. And when I mean from my leg, I mean from here all the way down to my fucking shoe. That's huge. And if somebody wants an alligator tattoo on them, cool. But if I personally woke up with a tattoo of an alligator tail on my leg that big, I would cry. And I would be upset. There'd be no way I could... Uh, First of all, I got plans for this right leg. Um, I don't have any plans for my left leg yet, but um, I don't even know if I'll get tattoos on that leg. But I have plans for my right leg. I want it to be under the sea themed. And um, if I got an alligator tattooed there, that would be awful. And you know, I'm worried about getting a tattoo that I don't want or end up being in, in a way that I don't want it. Or maybe I'm at the tattoo shop and um, I tick and then I have like a big ass line going down my arm or something or maybe he goes in too deep and then I get um what is it called tattoo blowout like I know tattoo blowout is a um possibility when you get a tattoo but it it's really scares me because I'm so pale and you would notice it on me more um so that that's just something I'm worried about I do not want tattoo blowout I'm willing to get a tattoo and hope and just hope that I don't get it. Like, I don't, it's not something that is going to keep me from getting a tattoo. Um, but I would be upset about it if I got tattoo blow up. I'd probably get over it, but it would be something that I'd be at first upset about. Um, so, I can't think. Anyway, um, I get the tattoo, and in order to get the tattoo, you know, I have to climb into this cave, and it's like Grand Canyon sized. Like, it was just, half of the dream was me climbing into this place. And finally I get there and I start talking to him and it's weird. The cave is really, really tall, like tall like a building. Um, like the, the top of the cave was pretty high and it looked straight and flat like if, it, if I was in a normal room. It's almost like my brain forgot that I was in a cave. Anyway, we had to climb up this area again it's because in order to get the tattoo I want, he needed to have light and the other tattoo artist apparently didn't need light. I guess that was part of the, well, if you want a cheaper tattoo, we're going to do it in the dark. I don't know. Anyway, he gets me on this ledge inside this cave and I spread out Eagle and for some reason I'm spreading my arm out and letting him tattoo my arm, but the tattoo was on my leg. So that part of the dream just doesn't make any sense. But the tattoo was on my leg at the end of the day. Um, but anyway, he put blue in the tattoo at first for some reason. And he's like, wait, alligators are green. So he goes over it with green. And then I go home and I've got this, like, beautiful tattoo on my body, you know. I was so happy about it. And for some reason, I, somebody with white ass hair, like, white hair like um, Billie Eilish, or gray. She has gray hair, but it was pale. Whatever it is. 
and she had short hair. It was like a bob. Almost kind of like Lady Gaga was driving me. And they're like, well, girl, if he messed up, we got to go back. So we go back and we climb and scale in there. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I, I missed some of the blue. So he goes over the blue again. With some more of the blue with green. And then I go home. And then I go back to him. I'm like, dude, I hate this tattoo. I don't know why I wanted an alligator tattoo. I'm really like, and I'm starting for flipping out, like, realizing what I did, you know? I got a shitty, stupid tattoo, in my opinion, on my body. It's, I don't think other people are stupid if they want an alligator tattoo. Personally, I would be upset. I just want to make sure no one's getting, like, offended. Like, if you want to get a tattoo of a fucking butthole, do it. But I, personally, I would be upset about that. You know? Um, and if I got a tattoo that big, you know, you can't really cover it up. Um, you wouldn't really be able to cover it up. And, um, I guess you could try to, like, laser it off and then try to cover it up with something. But that'd be a lot of money. And in this dream, I was stressing out, you know, I'm like, what am I going to do? I got the stupid tattoo. I had plans for this, you know. The blue, I think intentionally, I think originally in the in the dream... The blue was supposed to be because I wanted a, a mermaid there. Because that's what I want. And then I guess somehow it ended up being turning into a alligator tattoo in my dream. So I don't know. I wish I remembered the whole thing. It's all, I know bits and pieces. And it was just an interesting dream, you know. I've had weird dreams before. Like um, once one time I was riding a llama in the sea, like underwater. And the llama had a snorkel, and I was a mermaid, so I didn't need a snorkel. And you know, in the dream, the snorkel wasn't even above water, but apparently it worked. I don't know. But I went for my llama, and then I went to a horse, and then I finally upgraded into a uh, seahorse. It was a weird-ass dream. So, um, yeah, that was my dream for you. Um, um, the doctor said that my throwing up could be from the Tourette's. We, he called it Tourette's. Um, it, that it's blood or the, um, I'm assuming he thought I had Tourette's. Um, it could be Tourette's, but you know, we don't know yet. Um, I did get referred to a neurologist. They finally called me. I can't get in till October. So I asked her, I'm like, can you beg the doctor to see if I can get in sooner? And she says, I'll see what I can do. So she's going to call me back and see if I can get in before October. He says, normally, um, if somebody has been having tics for this long, um, he'll get them in soon. So, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Um, the gastroenterologist stomach guy, he did a biopsy. We were waiting on the results of the biopsy, but the biopsy results came back and they looked good. So, he didn't see anything in my stomach. So, I'm really excited about that because they were worried about gastroparesis. Um... So, I think, um, I gotta go back to him, and we're gonna see what else he has to say, um, because there might be other tests he, to do, but I really don't think he's gonna do other tests. I think they're probably gonna diagnose me with what it, we originally thought it was before my GP sent me over to him. We thought he was, like, um, I can't think of the name. It's a vomiting syndrome. I'll put it up on the screen because I can't remember my mind's blinking, but it's something, you know, so we'll find out what it is, but, um, yeah, I'm just really excited because I was, you know, I did, I, I know about gastroparesis and when he said that, um, it worried me, um, so I'm happy about this, no gastroparesis and there was no ulcers, he said, my stomach looked pretty good, so I'm happy about that. I do, he's either going to call me um, about um, the Tourette's cause, uh, or the tick disorder because I do understand where he's coming from where if I tick a lot it back to back to back to back that has caused me to throw up but this is different. Um, you know, I'm waking up in the morning at like every, it's like every time at 3 to 4 a.m. and I'm throwing up on myself and that really um, fits that syndrome thing. So. We'll see what he has to say. I don't think he diagnoses that, though. I think just a GP diagnoses it. And, you know, my GP wanted everything to be checked out first before, understandably, before he diagnosed me with the syndrome. So, 
Um, we'll see how it goes. And i um, just happy about the good news. Yeah. Um, so, you've probably been noticing I don't have my septum piercing hanging down from my nose. I do have jewelry in it. Ugh. I do have jewelry in my nose. It is a retainer. Can you see it? It's blue. There it is. It's up in my nose. It is a little swollen, so it does look like it's slanted. It does that when you're... Sometimes your septum piercing can look not straight when it's swollen. My nose is very swollen. Hold on, I'm putting it back up. Um... Basically, I was trying to learn how to get the captain be captive bead on and off, and I'm a very um, spontaneous and um, impulsive person, so my hands were feeling pretty good and I hadn't been ticking that much throughout the day, so I thought it'd be safe. So I got on my bed and I set the bed up to if I dropped the bead, because um, getting it out isn't hard, it's getting it back in. And, you know, I had to tape the piercing when I went to this place because, um, when I went to this place. So, um, getting glass, a glass one of these, um, eventually, so that if I ever have to have a procedure where I go under again, that they, that I can switch the things instead of taping the things. Because I have issues with tape and my skin reacts not the best way. So, um... I wanted to learn how to do it so I didn't have to learn how to do it in the hospital next time I go and um, I wasn't going to take the actual piercing out of my nose I was just going to figure out how to put the captive bead back in and out because it doesn't it doesn't screw into it it um is held in there by pressure so oh my goodness my cats anyway um I was going to get back in there and I had it just sitting there and I just needed tight to tighten it and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I had a clapping tick. And clapping ticks are very powerful. They make my hand bright red when I do them. And um, I bent the whole metal around my nose. And I honestly don't really know how I did this because my dad had to get two pliers and pry it off of my nose. And he had to use force, like a lot of force. I know that my ticks are very powerful, but it was so powerful, I bent a whole metal ring into the shape of a like fish pretty much the end uh, the end part of the um piece where they kind of connect and the ball goes through had crossed over like this kind of and the part of the ring circle ring had turned into an oval and i don't know i'm not explaining it very well but like it was shoved up in an oval towards this part of my nose up here in the um cartilage so my nose up there is all fucked up it's very sore it's very sensitive when I talk I can feel the septum hurting so um hopefully this will heal um it was already painful still prior to so I was healing I'm healing slowly as it is um and now I fucked my nose up um eventually probably tomorrow I'm gonna go back and get some new jewelry I just haven't been able to drive and go up there, so my mom's probably going to take me tomorrow. So, um, I'm really mad. I'm not really mad, I guess. I'm just kind of upset because the jewelry was expensive and I fucked it up. But, um, probably going to get him to color the jewelry this time into, like, a darker color. Um, I noticed that in my, in my pictures... And, and sometimes in my video you can't really see that it's there and only every now and then you can see it shine. And I do like that look, um, but since I'm going to be wearing it constantly until it heals, I want it to be seen all the time and I've, um, I don't know, I just like the way the darker one looks. Um, eventually I'll probably get another silver one too. Because um, I do want to switch my jewelry out when it heals and play around with different jewelry so this time I think I'm going to get the darker one depending on pricing honestly but yeah that's why you don't see my septum piercing in this video I don't know 
you'll see a lot of um, old videos with that septum piercing in it, so just don't get confused. Pre-recorded video is a thing. I really do like seeing myself after when I'm editing because I can notice more of what's going on with me, you know? Um, people tell me for the longest time that you're not saying what you mean. Like with me switching words, you know, and me having to put the correct words on the screen, I can see it. And it's my cat's in the litter box, sorry. Um, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's fulfilling. Not fulfilling. It's just validating. I don't, I can't think of the word that I want. It's just nice to see it myself instead of having other people tell me you're doing it constantly. Because for some reason, I hear myself say the right word. And so for a long time, I was having trouble believing that I was doing that. And so now that I'm seeing myself do it on camera, and I'm having physical proof in front of myself, it has helped me cope with it more. And I can now laugh about it. So... I'm sorry this video is so long. I'm going to try to edit a lot of um, this stuff out. I don't really think y'all want to hear me tick constantly. So if I'm wrong about that, I'm totally willing to show you the whole, the whole, um, in the future, my whole, like, experience there. I think I'm probably going to edit down the video a lot of what I got at the place because I kind of left my um, phone going the whole time. That I was there and had it pointed up at me on the ground when I was, um, what do you call it? I like to sit on the ground. I tick a lot less on the ground. For some reason, sitting in chairs seem to escalate my ticks in public. So I've always been a ground person. Even in high school, um, I would bring a pillow and blanket to school and sit on the ground. Otherwise, my ass would be freezing. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, don't forget that I fucking love y'all. Um, let me know how y'all are doing in the comments section. And, um, thank you for being alive today. I love you. Bye. They put a gag in my mouth. No, they didn't put a gag. It was blue. 
that's a bite block I was telling you about, remember? How they tell you to bite down so you have that opening so they can put the scope down. Remember we talked Hi. about that? Here, drink some more water. No! Get the IV out, okay? Slam! No! Your sniff on your helmet. No! Alcohol that keeps you from being nauseated. Popcorn. I'm not giving you nothing right now. No, no, not right now, Katie. <laughs> Who? You. No! Hey, Katie. Hi. How you doing? She doesn't know yet. <laughs>